Oh, what's good? We about to tap. Well, it been a while, man. Been a while, man. Got to tap back into the Larry Bird, man. Been a while, man. But I just try to, you know I mean? I try to tap into different stuff, man. You got to tap into different stuff. You got to try different things, man. But, man, I'm kind of sorry for um not providing y'all more Larry Bird, man, because I wanted to do more, but I had to tap into, like, other videos and stuff. But we about to tap back, back in, man. We about to really tap back in. All I say is like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. Now let's tap in. During the 1984 playoffs, a really unique game was played in the NBA, an unprecedented game, played in conditions that today would be unimaginable. Larry Bird's Boston Celtics hosted Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's Los Angeles Lakers in an iconic duel. Game 5 of the NBA Finals. The Lakers were coming off a finals loss to the Philadelphia 76ers last season, while the Celtics had suffered a disappointing second round exit to the Bucks. One of the two, this time, would come out on top. In inhumane conditions, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson would fight to prove their dominance and establish the dynasty that would reign in the second half of the 19. Nah, they both, they both had iconic uh, NBA finals. Like that's how you know they're winners, man, because they both been to the NBA finals a lot and if, i feel like if larry bird probably didn't get hurt that man would have probably won out more, even more championships like i really do believe that y'all let me know in the comments 80s larry bird who had not yet shown all what he was capable of after winning his first regular season mvp just a few weeks earlier he knew he had to prove that his leap in production was also present in the biggest moments but with five championship rings between the two Lakers stars, this wasn't looking like an easy mission. Yes, in 1984, Larry knew what it was to be an NBA champion. He had achieved it in 1981, along with Cedric Maxwell and Robert Parrish, but he had not yet proven to be the best player in the league. I mean... He had not yet proven to be the best player in the league. I mean, he was very good. I mean, during those three seasons, he had emerged as the leader of the Celtics and had made a huge leap in production. He was a better shooter, better scorer, better passer, and better defender. But still, on the NBA's biggest stage, he had not been able to showcase his incredible talent yet. But that year, he would finally get his chance. Of course, his rivals were the legendary Lakers of Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who, in 1984, already had a lot of experience during big moments. They already knew what it was like to be the finals MVP. Bird dreamed of savoring that feeling, and he knew he had the talent to achieve it. That's why, during the 1984 finals, the stakes were high, to say the least. The series was tied at two wins, and two of the four games already played went to overtime. Maximum competition. Therefore, the winner of the game to be played on June 8th at the Boston Garden, Game 5 of the series, would probably determine the winner of the championship. Did I mention the stakes were high? The problem? Well, the Celtics' home arena wasn't quite fully operational. A malfunction in the air conditioning had caused the temperature inside the Boston Garden to reach 97 degrees, an absolutely unbreathable environment for players who are used to much milder temperatures. But if you thought the NBA even thought about canceling the game, you'd be wrong because it was the 80s. It was a different time. I'm pretty sure they would have played the game even if World War III had broken out. Anyway, both teams had their full arsenal, their luxury starting five. But the news that day was definitely the temperature. It was a particularly hot June 8th, and the players had no idea of the uphill battle they were about to fight. But despite the heat, Larry Bird came out with a clip. I mean, but Larry Bird, Magic, and Dr. J, and Bill Russell, and Wilt Chamberlain, and Jerry West, and... Like all the time greats, even, you know what I mean? Like, they all really made, they all paved the wave and they all made the NBA for what it is today. And see, a lot of them don't even get their credit. And they don't even be in a, a lot of players' top tens and, and all that. Like, that's kind of like a, a, a dis, disservice and disgrace in people's mouth because, like, 
come on, man, you got to appreciate what they did for the game. Because when Larry Bird, man, Larry Bird was that man before he got hurt. You know what I mean? And, and then, too, imagine him, uh, Reggie Lewis, and uh, Len Bias. You know what I mean? That never happened with them. And Larry Bird didn't ever get hurt. That man probably could have, like, competed. He could dominate. I, and I believe probably Jordan would have won all those six championships. Like, you know what I mean? If we being hot, if we speaking in terms, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think Jordan wins all those rings because Boston was that team back then. You know what I mean? And they had a whole bunch of talent. Even if Larry Bird would have been like, all right, let, let me take like a, like a little uh, backseat so these other players can develop and, and so we can start winning more. You know what I mean? Like he could have did that and still could have been winning and dominating and putting up numbers too. You know what I mean? Like, come on now, like, I feel like Bird could have easily had five, six more chips. Come on now. You feel me? Clear game plan. Dominate the paint like he had never done before. So, in a way, he started playing the role of center. First with plays like this one, where he sets a great screen that allows Dennis Johnson to knock down the open mid-range. But also with the ball in his hands. I mean, we already know that Larry loved to work from the low post. It was his easiest way to score because his shooting threat added to his physicality was almost unstoppable. So here he starts to fight for a position and then he buries his man underneath to give himself position for an easy finish. And that's just another Larry Bird's game that he had. Of course, always involving his teammates on offense and getting good shots for them. Here, Bird finds Maxwell with a great entry pass that he uses to force the foul. Something that would happen all night long, by the way. And he was still looking for options from the low post, too. But in this case, Michael Cooper's defense caused a turnover. Mainly because Bird was just kind of playing with his food, you know. But despite the mistake, he continued with his game plan. On the next play, Bird receives another entry pass and goes bully ball mode against Cooper. He clearly felt that there was a mismatch on him, right? And Larry was just doing it all. He grabbed a lot of rebounds in the first quarter, and when he did, the Celtics were able to... Mouse in the house, mouse in the house. He too small, he too small. And get out in transition. On this play, Kareem misses his skyhook. Bird grabs the defensive rebound and finds Dennis Johnson in transition, who knocks down the mid range. Meanwhile, knowing he can get Cooper in trouble if he goes to the rim with physicality, Bird keeps trying to abuse him. But this time he gets called for an offensive foul. And not only on defense, offensive rebounding was a great resource for Larry during that game. And not only in one play, but in two consecutive plays, Bird manages to score after the rebound, making an emphasis on second chance points. The first quarter is not over yet, and the Celtics star already has eight points and eight rebounds. In a game, by the way, that was getting pretty intense. Now, although the Lakers started really strong, the Celtics managed to dominate the last minutes of the first quarter, and the score after the first period was tied at 26. But Bird was doing it all. He was scoring, rebounding, playmaking. Of course, that's just a normal day at the office for him. And then the second quarter began as the first ended. Bird grabs a defensive... Yeah, man, like, Bird had an all-around game, man. Like, he could do it all, like, you know what I mean? Like... Like, and you can't even compare nobody to Larry Bird and now today's NBA because, like, Luka Doncic, he's the overseas, like, he's like the overseas uh, version, but but he's not Larry Bird, though. Like, Larry Bird was on a whole nother level, and Larry Bird was, like, that white American that could actually who you know what I mean? And I wouldn't com even compare him to, uh, I wouldn't compare him to Gordon Haywood because Gordon Haywood was never on Larry Bird level like let's be real you know what I mean but I mean but who who was like on Larry Bird level as a white American basketball player <laughs> you know what I mean like come on man it was nobody even close to Larry Bird his height his size he could shoot basically anywhere on the court you know what I mean like come on man and he had an all-around game man he and he was a winner you know what I mean? Come on, man. Like, you can't even beat that. Like, Larry Bird was on another level for real back in his day when he used to play. Nah, like, Larry Bird, you got to put him in, like, in your top 10, like, your top 15. Like, you got to at least put him somewhere around there. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. You got to pay homage to what Larry Bird did in the league, man. Like, ain't nobody could guard that, man. Come on, man.
Rebound and throws a crazy outlet pass the length of the court that ends up hitting its mark. Shortly after, the forward finds McHale in the paint with a perfect over-the-top pass, allowing him to add another dime to the assist column. This would be the second-to-last assist he would get that night, but not because of poor passing. It was more like his teammates weren't really hitting their shots. And then on the other side here, Magic Johnson had to knock down a mid-range, but he actually struggled to put the ball in the basket this game. He relied on his elite playmaker. But it wasn't near enough to outdo Bird. Another example of Bird's aggressiveness that night is this play in which he throws his man into the back screen, leaving him wide open, and then he finishes the layup. Always showing his IQ and his ability to move the ball. The Lakers, they just knew it was Larry Bird's day. They tried everything to stop him. Every time Larry had the ball in his hands, he always had two defenders around him. And the most incredible thing is that it didn't matter. In this play, Bird knocks down the fadeaway from the low post with ease, even though L.A. sent a double team. Shortly after, he knocks down his first three-pointer of the game, which, funnily enough, was almost missed by the television crew. And later, Bird steals the ball on defense and passes to Dennis Johnson in transition for the assist who, by the way, played a pretty good game. And then Casey Jones decides to reward Larry for this incredible display of basketball with a short break that would last barely a minute. When he returns, the Lakers' defense had not forgotten about him. They were literally sending a double team as soon as he touched the ball. But if there's one thing Bird knew how to do, it was to take advantage of that extra attention to find open teammates, as in this play. At halftime, the Celtics were up by only two points. With the oppressive heat, Bird was playing with even more intensity, though. He was the team's leading rebounder and scorer that night, in addition to doing much of the dirty work, too. And for the Lakers, unfortunately, neither Kareem nor Magic are really putting on their best offensive display. A difficult night for the two Lakers stars, who saw the Celtics star shining brighter than ever. Honestly, they had never seen this version of Bird on such an important stage before. As the third quarter begins, Larry continues to use his gravity to find open teammates who just couldn't find their shot. On that same possession, after his team grabs the offensive rebound, Larry decides to shoot it and score himself. Okay, fine, he says. If you're not going to do it, I'll do it myself. And sure enough, he did. A few minutes later, Larry knocks down the three-pointer from the left wing on a catch-and-shoot with the defender in his face and with plenty of time on the shot clock. A shot selection that was insane for the time. But what are you going to tell the man if he's making it? The Celtics bench, as usual, went crazy. They were witnessing the birth of a generational player, so no surprise there. I mean, Larry Bird has already accumulated 21 points and 15 rebounds. Dang, 21 points and 15 rebounds, man. Dang, man. That man really did impact the stat sheets for real, man. He impacted the whole game pretty much. You know what I mean? Like, that's how you know Bird was really that good that guy for real back then you know what i mean come on man 15 rebounds man come on man i mean he was grabbing pretty much every rebound the whole game you know what i mean come on now you know what i mean come on now i'm pretty sure that man probably had probably eight eight assists probably he probably even had 10 assists probably that game probably <laughs> you know what i mean Halfway through the third quarter it's been a legendary night for him far from settling though Larry is working even harder on defense. Look at this incredible block where he gets whistled for a foul on the putback. And look at his emotion when it happens. He's pissed. And he didn't care how hot it was. He didn't care about drinking water. He just wanted to show that it was his time. And the crazy thing about this is that anyone in his situation would forget about doing the dirty work. No, not Larry Bird. Look at this example of incredible basketball IQ, too. Bird sets a fake screen to pull the defender and allows Robert Parrish to get the easy basket. Even being defended by two players at once, Larry pulls the trigger when he can. Like on this play where he beats the buzzer of the third quarter with this incredible shot after a pump fake. And of course, the Boston Garden is on fire. Yes, because of the heat, but also because of the madness that Bird is unleashing in front of their eyes. In those moments, no one was thinking about the sweat they had on them or about the gravity of the situation they were in because they were witnessing a masterclass from Larry Bird during the entire game. 15,000 people moving like crazy at 97 degrees. They didn't care. 
And this performance was also disconnecting Kareem and Magic, who watch on helplessly as they can't do anything to stop him. At the end of the third quarter, the Celtics are up by 11. And, well, although Jabbar was not having his best game, look at this crazy block he gets on Robert Parrish at the beginning of the last quarter. The center was 30, by the way. He was still moving like he was 19. Maybe that's why he could play in the NBA until he was 43. Well, let's not forget about Bird. This is his night. On this play, he knocks down another shot from mid-range on a catch-and-shoot from the left wing. Shortly after, he gets a rest for a few minutes. Casey Jones could afford the luxury that day. It wasn't normal to be leading the Lakers by more than 10 points, to be fair. Of course, it wouldn't be long before Bird comes back, and when he did, he made the difference again. First getting the defensive rebound, his 18th of the game, by the way, which he promptly turns into two points on the other end of the court. The forward was dominating, like never before, on a special night. And yeah, it was also special because the referees had to wipe the sweat off the ball with towels every few minutes. And to cap off his incredible performance, Bird attacked the rim hard from the top of the key to end up getting a bucket while being fouled and promptly knocks down a free throw to cap off the and one. And the garden goes after absolutely crazy. And then Larry's able to sit on the bench for the last three minutes because the Celtics had a lead of almost 20 points on the scoreboard and knew that the game was already in hand. But even though Bird had made a statement and proved to everyone that he was the best player on the planet, the job still wasn't finished. The Celtics had to win one more game to become the 1984 NBA champions. And it wasn't in game six, which the Lakers won at home 119-108. It was in Game 7, in which the Celtics won at home with 20 points and 12 rebounds from Larry Bird. He was selected MVP of the Finals for the first time in his career, and that would only be his first season at the highest level. The first time he could feel like the best player on the planet. It was then that he began his incredible streak of three consecutive regular season MVPs. That series, that game, gave him the confidence to know that no one could stop him. Nobody had his versatility. No one was as complete. And from then on, and until he was seriously injured during the 1988-89 season, Bird imposed his dynasty. The NBA became his league, and his era will go down as one of the most legendary in basketball history. All right, that's it for this one. Let us know what you thought. No, he was a legend for real, man. Like, he was really ahead of his time for real, man. Like, he really made the NBA for what it is, and they really, they really bite his style. They really took his style for real, if you really think about it. But like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. And I'm out.